Hello and welcome. My name is Tyrion Lannister. Alright folks, today I wanted to do a quick kind of just overall video on dragons, the dragons of Westeros. So, um, let's say you're a new player, you're getting to Westeros, you're like, where do I go to find out about my dragons? Well, there's the Dragon Isle right over here. You can also click on this icon down here or press D. That'll all take you to your dragons. Now, you will notice that there are four different dragons in the game right now. I have unlocked all of them, and I'm happy to be able to go through all of them with you. Also, please be aware that um, a good deal of my dragons are probably stronger than yours might be. Um, you know, there are some max players that are much, much stronger than mine, but um, all my first two dragons are maxed. Sapphire Dragon is not, and my uh, Lightning Dragon is also not. But um, let's go ahead and break down what we've got here. So, important thing to note is that there are two types of dragons. There are War Dragons, and there are Support Dragons. The War Dragons are ones that you can send out and explore. You can put them in battles. The Support Dragon is just giving a basic buff for everything. It's not someone that you can actually send him out. Um, he's just there to buff everyone else, basically. So... Our first war dragon is, of course, Darkfire. As you can see, you can change his appearance a little bit. Um, one of the fun things that I unlocked over time was that I have the permanent nightmare skin, which is why he has these little scars all over him. That is what the nightmare skin looks like. But you can see that I could also dye him different colors, um, which is always kind of fun to look at. Um, all the different fun colors we can give them. There, make him look a little gold. Maybe we'll see what the green, oh, the green looks kind of cool. Again, you can play around with it, whatever you want. Um, definitely lots of fun to be had making your dragon personalized to what you want. Um, quickly with his skills, he has six basic skill slots, and then as you can see, I've unlocked a seventh. Um, but he starts with six. The seventh can be achieved through dragon blessings, which we'll cover in just a second. Um... He also has um, some just basic strength, defense, agility, critical chance, and protection chances. The critical chances and protection chances come strictly from dragon blessings. Again, we'll get to that in a moment. But the strength, defense, and agility has to do with how it interacts in battle. The strength is just basically how much its attack does. The defense is how well it defends your troops um, from other dragons specifically. And then the agility is how quickly it's going to attack. Um, so let's compare the Darkfire Dragon to our Shadow Moon Dragon. As you can see, the Shadow Moon Dragon is the second dragon you'll get. Um, instead of the fiery essence that Darkfire consumes, the Shadow Moon consumes Shadow Essence. As you can see, the Shadow Moon is a little bit less agile. You can see that it's 1050 compared to 1100, but you're trading that for a lot more strength and defense. Um, again, just comparing the two, you can see that it is quite stronger, um, both on strength and defense. Notice that these numbers might be very different from yours. Um, again, they are both buffed by the Dragon Blessings. Um, so, really quickly, just to compare them a little bit more robustly, the Darkfire Dragon also has a couple of dragon skills. You can get a construction reduction, a research speed reduction, you can randomly get a badge, and there's this land of adventure where it just increases the amount of gains um, resource-wise that you would get whenever you go on an exploration with that dragon. Um, this is very similar to the skill that you can get. Um, if you use, here, let me just quickly show it. If you use one of these gathering skills, it's the same type of deal. You get 14% additional resources. You would just get a 20% bonus on top of that. Okay, so comparing to our um, Shadow Moon Dragon, there is the instant collection skill where you can instantly complete four random resource collections. Um, you can get it up to five with certain buffs in, again, in the Dragon Blessings. Um, there is a Dragon Bite, which you can use on your enemies, which um, will actually kill some of their troops and it will reduce their army attack. Um, there's also the Merit Huntsman, where you get more merit for the next uh, certain amount of time. Um, and lastly, there's the on-the-spot execution, where you can just kill a lord that you have. Really, really great um, if you want to get a quick Hoff buff from it, but as you can see, a very long cooldown. Um, these that are, uh, that are locked are ones that are only achieved through Dragon Blessings. Okay, 
Next up, let's look at the Sapphire Dragon. As you can see, my Sapphire Dragon is much smaller, much, much more expensive to actually upgrade. Always going to cost black diamonds to get um, any type of Sapphire Essence, whereas the other two can be obtained for free. Um, but because the Sapphire Dragon is paid, it gives a lot more. Um, so for starters, you can see that the skills are much more expansive. The first is just a basic total attack buff um, as well as uh, whenever they're in uh, rallies, they can kind of gain experience. I'm um, sorry, in battle, they can gain experience. Um, I believe this is to help them grow. Um, I honestly haven't needed to use it because I'm always able to use my food, but the point is that when you use them, they can actually grow quicker that way. Um, next up, their Agile skill. This increases your, this has a passive and an active. The passive is that it will increase your marching speed, your army size, and your rallied army size. And when you activate it, it basically doubles that. So very, very helpful, really, really good. Um, anything that's increasing your army size or your rally size is always going to be something that you want. Next up, we have the Devastate skill. Um, this basically means that the next two um, battles that your Sapphire Dragon is in, it's going to do a massive bit of damage at the very beginning, um, and there's a chance that, uh, sorry, there's a chance that when they do their attacks, they're going to actually completely kill those troops instead of just injuring them, so it's kind of another chance for you to get more killed troops instead of just wounded. Um, the blockade is probably what it's most notorious for. It locks your opponents in. They cannot move. They cannot transfer. Um, it also reduces their training speed and their healing speed. Really, really damaging to use this on in the right spot. And then lastly, the flaming breath. This one is the one um, that it will do a ton of bonus attack. Um, it'll just really be very, very bad for your opponents. Um, you'll also reduce the amount of damage that they're doing. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. As you can see, it's very, very expensive to use. Um, all of these skills are, are very helpful in their own right and going to really help your dragon. Um, just to really quickly compare the stats, I want to note that, again, because it's only level 20, it is much lower stats than the other two. But you can just see, like, the Agile. It's a little bit slower than the others. But um, as you can tell, uh, the end stats are going to be much, much higher once it's fully leveled up to level 60. Also, really quickly, it has a lot more skill slots than the others, so I have three unlocked right now. It'll eventually have six, seven, eight, and then a ninth from Dragon Blessings, which is a lot. Okay, lastly, I want to talk about our support dragon, the Lightning Dragon. Basically, the Lightning Dragon gives these stats. It'll give all dragons more power, all dragons more defense. It'll give a troop defense, troop health, or it'll give troop uh, reduction in attack. These are just the same. But um, basically, it's just giving those stats buffs. There's nothing else to it, nothing too crazy, but it is really helpful to get. That's why you want to grow it as quickly as possible because as you grow it, it means you get more talent slots so you can increase the overall stats that it is providing. I would say that in general, dragon power is very good. Um, I tend to focus on that. And then once I get to the enemy attack reductions, I'm probably going to do all of those because attack tends to matter a lot. Um, I do think that the health also is pretty helpful. Um, so it's just kind of up to you what you want to go for. I'll probably do both the dragon defense and the dragon powers because I want to make those stats as good as they can be. But um, definitely kind of a fun little wrinkle for them to throw in with the support dragon. Um, there are no other skills that he has. It's just this. Um, as you can see, the attributes, it's just what it's passively helping others with. Okay, so lastly, let's take a look at dragon blessings. Dragon blessings are ways to buff your dragons even more. I'm just going to go right to this page. As you can see, all of the blessings that I have and how much it's giving. So the low-level blessing bonuses, I've unlocked all 12. It's giving me 24,000 more defense, uh, 123,000 more strength, and then a bunch of bow reduction, um, spear reduction, cavalry reduction, infantry reduction, total defense, total health, all of it, all getting reduced by various amounts based on the luck of the roll that I have. Really quickly, the intermediate blessings. Um, this is how you got the research speed increased, the construction speed increased. Um, you also can get some protection damage, crit damage, and you can also increase your dark fire's max level. 
I haven't unlocked the last two that will include a way for me to increase the max level of my Sapphire Dragon and of my Shadow Moon Dragon. So there are ways to increase those max levels as well. I just haven't gotten lucky and haven't rolled it yet, but it's right here. Hopefully one of these days I will be able to increase his max level. Um, but other than that, that's how you get some of these bonus abilities. There are also certain things where it'll increase the skill slots, like I said, or um, there's also, this is how I got the permanent skill. Um, or the permanent skin, I apologize. Um, there's a permanent skin for my um, Shadow Moon. Unfortunately, I haven't unlocked it yet. Also, just a base, like, increase the total attack by 10%. And this is where you get the protection damage as well as the crit damage from is from these intermediate skills. So like I said, lots of really good stuff here. Lots that I would really recommend you to take a look at. Dragon Blessings are... A blessing um, because they will give you a lot of help and a lot of helpful stats. Um, right now I'm at 1154 total blessings, meaning that's how many times I've totally run the wheel. Um, once I get to 1200, I'll unlock this page, the fourth of five. Can't wait to do that. Um, like I said, I'm getting pretty, pretty close, but it is very expensive nowadays. So trying to get there, but I hope that this was helpful for all of you in determining what to do with all of the dragons in Westeros. There are a lot of them. They are growing every day, and they are always really, really fun to see. Definitely don't forget to try to go through and customize them. Make them look like whatever you want. Um, it is really fun. Fortunately, I don't have any for my Sapphire Dragon, but I've got a lot for my Shadow Moon and my Darkfire Dragon, and a, they look really cool. I mean, look at that. I love that. Well, until next time, folks, my name is Tyrion Lannister, and I'll see you then.